a shortage of capital, you have shortage of skilled labor, and you have lack of infrastructure. Without these, forget about sustainable development, forget about the United Nations goals and everything. So what did China do? Well, China said we can solve that, or we have the capital. So since the uh, Forum on China-Africa cooperation in Johannesburg 2015, China provided $60 billion in investments and loans for infrastructure development projects, agriculture and industrial development. Uh, and the, in last September, uh, China pledged to the African nations to also invest $6 billion more to fill the gap in the capital uh, shortage. Now we have the we have the question of the lack of skilled labor, which is a real problem in Africa, lack of education. So China emerged in a very dramatic way as the country which received the large, it surpassed uh, England and the United States in the number of African students studying in China. So it's now 50,000 per year. And these are the Anglophile countries where people speak English. Uh, only France, because of its Francophone dominance in Africa, surpasses China in the number of African students studying in France. So this is a dramatic increase in the number of African students studying in China. Besides all the projects that China is financing and building in, in African countries like railways, as, as unlike what we hear in the, in the media is that they bring Chinese prisoners from prison and make them work in these projects, that's a complete lie. Most of the labor force used in these infrastructure projects in Africa are Africans. The management, most of it is African. Engineers, half of it are Africans. But in addition to the investment that the Chinese companies do, they educate the people to run these projects. These are the beautiful ladies who are now running the railway, the trains from Mombasa uh, to Nairobi in Kenya. Now, we have a lack of infrastructure, which is the biggest problem uh, in Africa's development. Now, this is not a Chinese idea. This is from 1982 Lagos plan, which was introduced by the African nations themselves, to connect all the major, all the capitals of Africa with highways. But it was never built, uh, for reasons we cannot go through now. But this is the kind of idea which the Chinese uh, prime minister in 2014, in a visit to West Africa and to East Africa, said, we can help implement this plan, but we will be build high-speed railways, we will build standard gauge railways to connect all African countries. What you do with this process is that Africa is very vast, but it's like a relativity theory. You can shrink the size of Africa the more you build fast transports uh, to connect the different countries. So the different, the big distances today will become much, much smaller to connect the different African nations. So in a short period of time, between 2014 and 2017, we have the, the uh, Djibouti, uh, Addis Ababa railway built very fast, very efficient, but it's also part of an Ethiopian plan, not a Chinese plan, to industrialize Ethiopia, to build industrial cities in eight locations, in, in, but they need the infrastructure, the power, and the skilled labor to make Ethiopia an industrial nation. And it's a quite impressive speed and dedication, both by the Chinese, but also by the Ethiopian people, we have welcomed the ambassador of Ethiopia here today. Uh, and then we have the, another plan which has been there for decades is the East Africa uh, Master Plan and the Lamu, South Sudan, Addis Ababa uh, plan. Now they are being implemented and built in cooperation with China. But I think third countries are moving in, like Japan and other European countries are participating in some of these uh, projects. This is the President Ihuru Kenyatta of Kenya inaugurating this railway last year, and you can see people are very jubilant. Uh, another transcontinental railway which China has helped build is the Benguela, uh, Zambia, Tanzania railway. It also was built in record time, so connecting West and East uh, Africa. Uh, we have actually the prospect of the possibility of connecting all Africa's rivers and lakes to turn them into a transport corridor 
by just building small sections connecting the lakes and the rivers, like the Europeans did. We have the Danube uh, mine grind uh, the river system, which is one of the busiest transport systems in Europe. It's connecting all East Europe to Western Europe through these rivers by building a small, a short canal, the mine canal, to connect the two rivers. This is very, very important. It's quite possible to do in Africa. Egypt is spearheading a project to uh, initiate such a process to connect all the Nile uh, river, uh, Nile river uh, countries together with the river transport system. We have another issue, a uh, place where Europe and China are working on is a, a terrible uh, uh, climatic or uh, ecological problem, which is the drying up of the Lake Chad. Lake Chad has been drying up for more than 30 years. Today, it's only 10% of its original size. 30 million people have been dependent on this lake for fishing, for agriculture. Now, there's mass immigration going on from this region. We have also terrorist groups using that situation, like Boko Haram, to increase their influence. Now, we have, there has been a project to solve this problem since the 70s, which is called the Transacqua, an Italian company, Bonifica, presented this already in, in 1972, but it was never built. It's to build a canal where we have the, the yellow area there to collect 5% of the Congo River uh, tributaries in eastern Congo in a 2,000 uh, kilometer long canal and make it flow into the Chari River and down to the lake. This way you can transport as much, twice as much water as the River Nile to the Lake Chad you can use the canal as a transport system. You can use the flow of the water in the Chari River for power generation. You can build new industries and connect these countries with a water system. And then when the Lake Chad is replenished, you can build agricultural area. Now last year, we had an agreement between uh, a Chinese Sino Hydro and Bonifica to start a feasibility study of that. The Lake Chad commissioned countries have welcomed this project and now Italy and China are working to study the project because uh, there are many obstacles. The Congo uh, have to accept this project. But this is a, a huge transformation of Africa. And you can see it's connected to the trans-African uh, transport system from Mombasa through uh, the Central African countries to Lagos. In, in, uh, so this project will transform most of that part of Africa and it's possible to build now. Another issue is the lack of energy. In the Congo, uh, we have the energy consumption per capita is 180 kilowatt hour per year. In Sweden, in comparison, it's 13,000 kilowatt hours per year. So a huge difference. 600 million Africans lack access to electricity. Now we have the Inga, the, the Congo River, we have this idea which also has existed for many years to build a series of dams to generate more than 40 billion megawatts of power. That's twice as much as the Three Gorges that my friend mentioned in, in, uh, in China. So even in this project, China and a Spanish company, uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, 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 hydropower company and uh, a Spanish company, they went together to form a consortium last year to start building the first series of these, which are about 11,000 megawatts of power. So this is a great example of a transformation taking place in Africa, but it brings China and European countries together for a good cause. So as we have said, if you don't have the tools of development, you cannot develop. And the tools of development is, as we mentioned, infrastructure, water, power, education, uh, and so forth. And if Africa has the tools, Africa can develop itself. Uh, it's not like a, a Chinese project. This is an African vision, which is already in the agenda 2063 of the African Union. Uh, there is a beautiful Sudanese uh, uh, proverb which says, uh, we wish to give our children two things, deep roots and wings to fly. So uh, it's a bit paradoxical because <laughs> Africans want their children to fly, but not to Europe, or die in the Mediterranean, or in the desert in Libya. They want their children to fly with their character, their ability to build their countries, as the president of Ghana said, 
last year. So the transformation of Africa is now possible, it's happening, it's not something which is in the future. It is a vision, but that vision is being uh, implemented. And this was solidified by the African Union. All African leaders, actually, except for one, went to the uh, Forum on China-Africa uh, cooperation last September uh, in Beijing. Half of the African leaders went to the General Assembly in New York of the United Nations. It, that's how much value they place on their cooperation with China. Uh, finally, I uh, would like to present this image. This is a true image by NASA in 2015, uh, nighttime. You can see Africa is very dark except for some spots. Not because there's nobody living there, that they don't have electricity. This is a good indicator of poverty. Uh, to the left is an image which I, I asked a friend of mine who's an artist to draw based on the ideas I have in my books and in uh, our institution working on these. And he produced that image. Today we have Africa, 1.2 billion people living in Africa. By 2050, we will have almost 3 billion people in Africa. So Africa will be the biggest workshop on the world. It will be the biggest market. So for a European and Swedish companies, now they have to study what's going on in Africa because a lot is needed. And China by itself cannot build all these projects. You need the European technology, you need the European skill to participate in this massive uh, development plan. So with, we have the many, many of the projects being built. I'm sure there are, uh, there are Swedish, German, and other machines involved, but the general policy is not to be part of that development uh, process. But I'm very optimistic, and uh, realistically optimistic, that this will happen in the coming decades. Thank you very much. Thank you.